Hey guys, so I know I am late with this video, but if you only knew what I've been going through, so what is today? April the 1st, I made four months, March 22nd, so I'm about 10, 11 days late in making this video. Um, a lot has been going on since my last video. Um, last video, I went to the doctor's office. He told me I had, well, he didn't tell me. He, it appeared that I did have some keloids uh, around my belly button area, uh, which was a concern for me. And um, so he gave me some injections, steroid injections, uh, to help with the inflammation and kind of flatten down the keloid. Um, I do have some keloids coming up around the incision area. Um, like one on one end, one in the middle, and then one on the other end. It's weird. So it's kind of raised when you put your hand around it. You can tell it gets lumpy in that one area, middle and on the side. And um, so when I go back on April the 11th, I'll address that with him again and see if he wants to do injections on those side. It is nowhere near like other worst case um, scenarios where people have keloids and they inflame, they look like these big old blisters, bubbles, and things like that. If you go Google keloids, um, you'll see. Um, so that is why I'm not too worried about mine. It's very minute, um, so it's not a big concern for me. But somebody who uh, does have a history of keloiding, it may be a problem and may affect you differently so you will make sure you want to talk to your plastic surgeon about how he handles that um i'm satisfied with how mine is handled um so i really have no concerns there um let's see everything is pretty much back to normal sleeping well sleeping on my stomach um exercising doing ab work um lifting bending Everything is pretty much back to normal, um, except I think I can't take a sit-down bath, which I'm not concerned about at all. Doing every normal thing possible that I was doing before the surgery, um, except for um, the bathing. Like I said, that's, that's not a big problem. However, it depends on what I wear. The pressure against the incision will make it a little tender. Somebody's coming in. Okay. Had to give an injection. Um, where was I? Uh, let's see. The upside to the, the tummy tuck is that it actually won't allow you to eat much. Um, I noticed if um, for instance, when we went to dinner for Valentine's Day, I didn't eat anything much all during the day because I knew we was going to kind of pretty have a big dinner. So I kind of like had shakes or some protein shakes during the day and then kind of had a full meal. And after the appetizer and salad, I felt my stomach stretching, kind of like how if you're laying down, someone's pulling your arms, someone's at the bottom pulling your legs. My stomach felt like it was stretching. So I attempted to eat some of the meal, couldn't even get the whole meal, could definitely not eat any dessert. And so I'm like, gosh. Um, and that was the pretty time, that was the pretty much only time I kind of indulged is if we kind of go to dinner, if it was a special occasion, like our, um, like, uh, like it was Valentine's Day, and I think it was the birthday that we went for dinner again, and I couldn't eat a whole lot. Um, it's actually very painful if you try to uh, overeat. So I can honestly tell you that the tummy tuck will not allow you to eat a whole lot. So um, that's a good thing, actually. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, a lot has changed. I know like when I said the last time that me and my girls was going to Miami in May, and then me and my fiance was going to go to the Bahamas in June. Well, now we're not going to Bahamas. We are getting married. Hey! 
nice pair of fingers. <laughs> and um, so now, not only am I trying to plan for the girls trip, I'm trying to plan for a wedding, trying to get everything booked as far as hotel, flight, package out there because um, we're going to do a beach wedding. And it's actually, it's just going to be us because I can't expect for everybody to fly out to Hawaii. Um, it's something that we've talked about wanting to do in the past. And maybe later we'll have a reception for friends and family to come um, maybe next year. Maybe when we renew our vows or something or our, on our anniversary. So it's just going to be us. And even just us being, just it being us, it's still a lot. You know, I've been looking for a dress. Got to find the right package, hotel, everything. And I have been like super, super busy. And with everything else going on as far as life, kids, getting older, getting ready to be 16. They want cars. And it's like, it's it's a bit much. So not, now we're not just vacationing in, in Hawaii. We're vacationing. Our anniversary is June 11. And that's the day we're getting married. So not only was vacation, it's an anniversary. It's a wedding. It's a honeymoon. <laughs> and so we'll be there for six nights. And um, it's a lot. So now I kind of want to go over someone wanted to know what is really necessary before or after your surgery. Things that are really necessary. Because I had a whole slew of things. I was like over prepared. I was like over prepared plus excited. And I just want to have everything out, you know, just in case I need it. And half of the stuff that was up there on my on my dresser was really not needed. Number one, number one thing is actually support. You are gonna need support. If you think somebody can just help you one or two days, it's not gonna happen. Especially if you have children, if you have pets, if you live uh if you have a two story home, you know, you gotta make sure everything is set for you because you really shouldn't be walking downstairs um so you need somebody to prepare food for you you need to make sure you have the food that you need before you have the surgery as far as you know your your light foods because you can't have anything real salty applesauce um saltine cracker saltless saltine crackers um soups not cream based stuff, stuff like that that's going to be really light that's not going to upset your stomach or cause any swelling support number one um number two make sure you fill all your medications before because you're going to have to take them with you so make sure you have your pain medication because they are going to administer some your, administer some of the medications when you come out of surgery make sure you have your HIPAA cleanse so you can shower the night before the day and the day of um, or you can use dial antibacterial soap. Um, just want to make sure you have cleaning supplies. Keep your area sanitized. Um, the basic necessities, gloves, um, alcohol, gauze, bandages. Pretty much it as far as supplies. Um, the bed, I would definitely say the bed is a necessity. Um, simply because I'm in the health field, I was able to get a bed for like six weeks for 75 bucks. Normally, it would probably be 125, 150. I think it's a great investment. Otherwise, if that's not an option, a uh, recliner couch. However, I did have one in my living room, but I didn't want to be bound to my living room all day long. I just couldn't. But I did sit in there every now and then, so that was a help. Um, if you can't do the recliner, which you can probably go to like maybe Aaron's Rents. I don't know how much it will be to just rent one for about a month or so. Um, if it's cheaper than the bed, you can do that. Otherwise, prepare yourself to be laying up in that bed with a mound of pillows behind you. Um, they did recommend a uh, triangle uh, arch that you can put up under your legs to keep your legs elevated. Um, you can do that if, if that's if that's something that you want to do. Um, it wasn't something that I want to do. I'm uncomfortable. I get hot real quick. So I didn't want all those pillows on me and all on the side of me and up under my legs. And, and, uh, I just, I, I just preferred the bed and, and that worked out great. Um, the toilet riser, that was a big help. You can get that from any medical supply store or you can get it from CVS, Rite Aid, Walgreens, Walmart, whatever. It was like $29.99. That was given to me by another DME rep. Um, 
toilet extender so that way when you sit you are not going all the way down on the toilet it's pretty much this much that you'll have to bend and um, it's very worth it if you can get a toilet extender um, medication over-the-counter medications that you're gonna need is Tylenol milk of magnesia Tylenol because you're gonna want to quit your pain medication after five days because it's gonna cause constipation you're not gonna have a bowel movement when you're on that Percocet or um, it's another one that they may put you on Vicodin whatever you're not gonna have a bowel movement and then you're gonna need some milk of magnesia I don't like milk of magnesia so I uh, did a fleet and um, that was trying because no one wanted to assist me with the fleet. <laughs> so I'm on the floor trying to bend down, trying to squeeze this fleet inside my rectum. And I can barely get half of the fluids up me. So therefore, I, w I felt impacted and I was on the toilet for like, I don't know, an hour. And when it came, it felt like, have you seen White Chicks? Um, I think it's Marlin. When he's lactose intolerant, I think he ate something and then he went in the bathroom and exploded legs just going like this. That's just how it was. Trying not to push because you can't push at all. Any pressure you put down there was painful. So I had to let it come out on its own. And then when it came out, it just came out in a magnitude of explosion. <laughs> Sorry, TMI, but it happened. So you do need the um, milk of magnesia. Um, let's see. If you're going to get drains, your 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 dressings is going to be a little bit different. So you, you're going to want to have um, some triple antibacterial ointment because you're going to have those sites where you're going to have the holes. So you want to keep... Uh, uh, from getting an infection or getting a bacteria infection, you're going to want to keep those bandaged up with the uh, triple ointment act antibacterial. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, if, you, if you're getting a lipo, they're putting holes into your body. So you're going to have to have the pro uh, proper things for you to bandage that up, which I didn't have. Uh, I didn't have drains. So none of that was had to do anything with me. All I needed was gauze for the first couple days and the paper tape. The paper tape is what I used all the way up until a month or so ago. Um, so paper tape, some gauze, maybe a band-aid or two, and that was pretty much all I needed if you're having the, the drainless tummy tuck. Um, Personal necessities that I needed was like the the, the tucks because I, I have hemorrhoid issues, um, the, the sanitary napkins because it was around my uh, menstrual cycle, um, that's pretty much it. Um, underclothes, you may need some disposable underclothes if you have the drains because you're going to have a lot of seepage and fluids that come out so you don't want to use your good panties so uh, a pack of regular off-brand fruit of loom whatever for you to use and dispose you can do that they said to wear uh, pajamas with the button-down pants that was too hot for me nightgowns just worked fine if you got somebody to put the nightgown over you hey whatever that worked for me um, I'm just trying to think of everything that was up there that I didn't need. I didn't need a bell because they were just at my beck and call. They were just wonderful. Fiance, kids, everything. Um, had my laptop by me, had my phone by me. Really didn't need to get up for anything because they did everything. Um, just whatever you want that's personal. Lotion, hand sanitizer. Um, you can use the uh, heat wraps if you have back pain that's fine just as long as it's not on your incision or anywhere near the site you can have that um, and uh, that's pretty much it um, as far as your scar, scar therapy you really don't have to worry about that until weeks out but I'm not at home so I can't show you the actual items which is raw shea butter and I got that from an African store it's just a tub of raw African shea butter any brand is fine um, Palmer's cocoa butter that's in the jar I use that 
and I used castor oil. I got it from offline. Um, tropical Isle uh, castor oil, black castor oil, and I just make that in the paste and I just rub that around my incision. Um, and that's all I really use. Um, it is getting the incision is pretty much the same as last month and the month before, and so no no change. However, the because it's so low around the pubic line the pubic hair is kind of growing over it so I can't show you my incision today because I'm scared to shave it because I want to cut myself so I, I read online that there's some type of baldless razor thingy majig that I can use that won't affect the scar because it's really thin um, and it, it won't uh <laughs> Can't, can't think right now. I'm trying to say everything so quick. But anyway, it's this type of shaver that you can use that's gonna that's good to go over the scar. Because I don't want to shave over the scar. So I got forced growing up. And I don't want to show you right now. So I can't. Maybe on the next visit I'll show you. Or when I go in on the 11th, I might do a little video of him giving me the shot or whatever. And I'm still waiting on those before and after pics. I'm still waiting on those before and after pics. And I will post those just as soon as I get them. And I hopefully I've covered everything because I sure didn't want to make this video so damn long. <laughs> and uh, if you have any questions, I'll see you then. I'll give you an update around the 11th or so. And um, yeah, I'm tired. Y'all have a good day. I just wanted to show you my ring. <laughs> I'm so excited. Bye, guys.